many people, um, oh, now it says the meeting is being live streamed. Have you started here? Okay, great. Got it. Yeah, hello. <laughs> yeah, we yeah, usually I, start the, the it, Facebook Live at 7.45, but I thought, you know, there's a lot of wonderfulness going on, so I started a little early. So that's good. Yeah, we're at Facebook Live, it looks like. And Franny, would you like me to record this also? Oh, sure, yeah. Let her rip. I can record about two hours and then we'll I'll start the recording. Two but, hours. I was thinking yeah. maybe about seven or eight hours. Is that all? Well, or? No, we can go on as long as we want and we can stay on Facebook Live <laughs> as long as we want. But the recording, the size of the recording can be about two hours. Otherwise, the size gets unwieldy. Yeah, no. So. So God know, forbid always. I should get unwieldy. Hi, Jonathan. Look, it's Jonathan Mellers from England. I know. Jonathan's here. He's our one of our regulars. And I also watched your Zoom with Karen and Mark, Jonathan Mellers, well before I think we became acquainted. So many of you stars. Well, I think I better just say a few words because uh, Franny loves my accent. So... Um, <laughs> say a few words and that's it i love it i got my money's worth mr <laughs> grant from england isn't that beautiful no we love hearing jonathan talk now i'm gonna talk right sorry. for a second sorry i talked over sorry i am going to surprise you one can actually put on a very posh <laughs> accent when one wants to. <laughs> then again, mate, I can talk as common as muck as if you need it. I didn't understand every word, but it was very show offy and good. <laughs> Did you understand every word that Jonathan said? Your accent is outrageous. I love it. Was every did everybody understand except me? <laughs> People get used to it. <laughs> I'm I sure. Know. It's I have I still have a little bit of a Canadian, which is where I'm originally from Can Canadian American ear. And I'm sure being immersed in Grantham, I, I, I have a very dear friend who's a Londoner and her accent is it's different, right? It's just it's different than yours. It's beautiful. I love it. I love it. It's like music. It's great. <laughs> it's so great. Is Rochelle coming on? Yes, yeah, Rochelle is coming on. Yeah, absolutely. I see her name. Um, and yeah, she's been on our um, Zooms before. We've really enjoyed getting to know her. Yay, there she is, Rochelle. Hi. Oh, Fran, look at all these beauties. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, hi, Rochelle. Can you hear us? <laughs> You're muted, my dear. <laughs> You're muted. You're muted. Cheers. <laughs> I'm mute. You tell go me if it's better. To, go to your tap to speak. Your mute. Phone. Um, mute, mute, uh, stop, share. No. <clears throat> um, hmm. It was there before. Let me. Oh, I know what to do. All You're right. good. You're good. Yes. Michelle, okay. we could hear you. I'm glad you could hear me. I've lost the Zoom. I'm back at Zoom. Hope. Okay, I'm back. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I Danny, so can you hear us? Oh, Danny might have muted. Oh, he can't. Okay. Hello, All Michelle. Right. Hello, Michelle. Hello. <laughs> Hello there, Jonathan. <laughs> Shalom, Danny. Hi, Karen. Hi, John. Hi, Mary. Yeah, the gang's all here. There's Lynn now. Lynn Girardi is here. Hi, Lynn. Lynn Girardi. Danny, we can't hear you. Hi, Lynn Girardi. Danny, you need to. Hello. Hello. Hi, everybody. Hi, hi everybody. Oh, Thank you. Hi. Thanks for thanks for doing this. Hi, Mary. Hi, John. Yes. Hi, Rachel. Hi, everybody. Hello. Hi, this is so cool. Um, um, what was I going to say? Um, 
I have no bloody idea. Uh, there's just so many accents here. And it's, it's, oh, I know what I was going to say. Mary had texted that Indy sends her love, your doggy, right? <laughs> Indy sends smooches to everybody. Oh, oh I love that. that. I think she's right there. We see Indy. Oh, lovely. Lovely. Gosh, oh, I've been overwhelmed. Isn't this a treat thing, everybody? Oh. I have a secret. Shh, what? I know I normally don't divulge anything personal about myself. However, I will make an exception. <laughs> we won't tell. <laughs> right. uh -uh. Our lips are sealed. Yes. Promise? Absolutely. <laughs> Scout's honor. Yes. From here, out already. from here, <laughs> from here down, I'm wearing pajamas. Oh, good. Oh, well, I never in my life. Oh, girl. it's a pajama party. <laughs> you should never have told me. <laughs> I know. Wear mine. Uh, that's the best thing ever about Zoom. Look at right. it. Oh. Isn't it a pajama party? And we all look so outrageously <laughs> fabulous. So who gives the flying flippity flop flop? Right. <laughs> Good. Pajama <laughs> party? What about if you sleep in the nude? <laughs> you just said it. <laughs> Yay, and I'm in the Maybe. bathroom. And I'm in the bathroom, but we won't say. Uh, <laughs> because that's where it's charging. I didn't say. <laughs> Never heard it. <laughs> well, I guess we all have our little secrets. <laughs> we all that. do. We all do. And and some are, you know, and it's funny being a memoirist, right? For so long. A lot of people think, oh, that means I can ask her anything and she should tell me. Mm. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, and, right. And like, you know, they want to know about, I mean, if I want to discuss like my toenail fungus, that's my deal. Mm. You know what I mean? We're all allowed to compartmentalize and decide. But I've had audiences, like when I used to perform my solo show, get absolutely livid. If mm. I'm really upset with me, if I didn't share certain things about my family or whatever, because this, I never wrote, wrote this to hurt anybody. It was really about my journey. And there's some things that, you know, people, in my family are just not comfortable right. with. I would never, you know, divulge anything if I knew it was going to hurt somebody. Right. So, yeah. but um, it's, it's, yeah, we all have our secrets and it's really just uh, such an interesting thing to decide what is or isn't, uh, you know, healthy for us to share. We're allowed yeah. to have our freaking secrets. Yes, mm -hmm. indeed. Indeed, yes, we are. Plus, I think, you know, when, when uh, often if people are, you know, really forthcoming and say, this is, you know, this is my story and this is, is that and the other thing, it's presenting a certain side. Right. Uh, like a slice of the pie and then we think we know them exactly well this is just this is just a piece and we all have pieces and you know a lot of people come to me and say oh I really really want to write my story and this and that and I I say you know if you're comfortable it's not the only thing to do for me it was a um like an inner I had to do it it was you know a a it really I was compelled to do it it was something I wanted to do really 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 but if right. It's not something, you, you know, anybody has to do, for goodness sakes. It's, you're called to do it. I wrote a, a, a story of when I had cancer as a young adult. Um, mm -hmm. I, wrote the, I wrote a manuscript about that, and then I got it online. I published it uh, myself uh, eventually. But... Um, and but anyway, I, I so I know what you're saying. And and I know that. And actually, I wrote that from a I was an evangelical Christian at the time. Oh, and so yeah. that's been decades, decades ago. But I kind of don't know what to do with the book because it still is my story of what I experienced. But I don't have that same perspective right. anymore. So the, the vantage point from which I told that story 
is not is no longer mine and i just so but anyway i've just kind of got it tucked away in a corner and if somebody uh ever especially if somebody might be going through exactly kind of what i went through with hodgkin's disease then mm-hmm. i might haul it out and 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 say you know whatever but yeah it's a, it's can be but for me it was really really beneficial i just kept what's, a journal through, throughout. what's the title what's the title babe um, the title of oh, your you, book you just had to ask me it was <laughs> it's um it's uh, g- g- yeah jesus and chemo oh. subtitle oh. on a rock in a hard place oh wow oh, wow that's great that's Very a great cool. title wow was, i thought so i thought it was kind yeah. of good too and because and i just my faith was it was about having faith through very difficult times and um and that's what you too do franny and i mean you bring that forth that no matter what we're going through or met, no matter what we've been through we can triumph i mean i do feel like that's a huge part of your message do you do you did you write it with that kind of that theme of not not initially because initially it was really about me struggling to uh breathe with being being heard with having a voice that uh understanding my my story and wanting to be authentically myself in a way that i even though i was touring as a stand-up comedian it it was it wasn't uh there were some truths that had been the big secrets you know that i'd been conditioned so much to keep secret because my father had repeatedly told me that I would get the family killed and myself killed if I told the truth of my heritage. But, you know, um, it, 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 it felt like I knew that that was a, a, a toxic piece that, uh, that kept coming up in the form of blocking me of, uh, because when you, <clears throat> when you're performing, you know, on stage, and in life as a human being, if you're being really, uh, you know, yourself uh, and you're not used to being authentic, then it's very uncomfortable. And I would be very lucid as an actor and as a comedian and do really well and and as a human being in life. And then all of a sudden it wasn't uh, it wasn't like it was um, an actual voice that I heard. It was that I felt so incredibly uncomfortable revealing being self-revelatory because yeah. I'd been so conditioned not to mm-hmm. that I would go into this crippling all of a sudden my old training came back because it had been so systemic when you're whatever it is when you're told so many times you know you shouldn't you couldn't you it'll get you killed it'll get as rational or irrational as it is unless until you uh, allow yourself to let go of those layers and there's so many different ways of healing that you know we're so t- conditioned to to have the old programming and there's so many different ways to heal that as we know um but until that's gone and and you can truly be allowing to to your authentic voice in yourself uh it, it, it it's like this ferocious attack on myself and i didn't know how to stop it i knew that the key that the doorway in was to 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 tell to let go of the secrets that that was you know for like for example like i would i would be um you know performing comedy and doing really really well and you know and then uh all of a sudden you know the audience would be laughing and all this and then all of a sudden i I, something in me felt so exposed and i would shut down and and it wasn't ordinary stage fright it was and 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 that happened in the acting realm and in all and nobody really knew what it was um, because PTSD wasn't really dealt with at that time. And you know what I mean? It, 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 all those, those were kind of new. And, and really what I say now with love and respect to Esther Hicks is, you know, I had out of alignment. I mean, however you want to frame it. Yes, it was uh, inherited PTSD for sure. Um, but it was out of alignment because I, you know, as a little girl, I'd been told these stories, never, ever, ever, ever tell anyone the truth mm. of your heritage, you know, and I was, my parents were Jewish Holocaust survivors. Um, and my dad did it out of, uh, you know, not because he was a monster, he did the very best he could, but he didn't, he had healed to the degree that he had healed. And so he wanted to protect me and he didn't have anyone else 
to talk to, and that's, you know, a little cray cray being a parent, as we know, right, to, 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 to make your, you know, because he turned me into sort of a surrogate wife, uh, not by sexualizing me, uh, you know, but, but, but there was a form of sexualization in making me listen to stories repeatedly, especially in the middle of the night when I should have been sleeping and, you know, getting my beauty rest for, for grammar school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, okay, Franny, just hold on a second. It's 7.45. A lot of times we don't even start until 7.45, but now that we have, just in case there's somebody on the planet that doesn't know who Franny Sheridan is, that <laughs> <laughs> uh, might like to know, and I'm sure that everybody would like, I, I would love to hear like your story, the, whatever, that thing, you know, the, your, who you are, what you do, and and, and, and whatever you want to share with us about who you are from a, some sort of uh, chronological way. And usually we have Karen introduce people. And so you're on Karen and then we can, you can, and then once, once, once Karen says who you are, you are in total charge of everything and everyone and, and, and you get to play and do whatever you want for as long as you want. So go ahead, Karen. Who is this well, person, Franny well, Sheridan? Golly, thank you, Mark. And we are so uh, utterly thrilled to have Franny with us tonight and her dear feller, Danny. Mm -hmm. And we, uh, so Franny is, I feel like I know her so well, although we've never met in person, but she is such a spark of joy and love and amazing inspiration uh, and does this uh, Facebook love and uh, this program on Abraham Fun, and then also from her personal page. Uh, but I don't, I don't even know where to start because there's so much that I could say about her um, and so much that she's done in her really amazing life in the arts uh, as, as an actor and as a playwright, as a comedian, so many, many things. And as just a, a, a persona that is, is just way bigger than life. And it's it's so fabulous to have her. Um, so anyhow, uh, she's written a wondrous book. I've read it. I had the great privilege of reading it and I just absolutely loved it. And so um, we just, so Franny, if you would um, just proceed to tell us as you're inspired about your book and about your life and your life and the book, of course, do dovetail beautifully and um, just anything and how you met that Feller of yours, that's a wondrous story in and of itself. Just anything you want to share, Gurlio. And then do you want us to hold our questions until the end or should we? Okay, so if anybody has a question, then uh, maybe they could raise their hand or something. Um, is somebody asking a question? No, I am. Okay. okay, I'd like to know. Okay, I'd like to know from uh, Franny. I call her Franny, by the way. Um, Franny. Somebody's talking in the background. I think. No? Somebody's talking in the background. <clears throat> I'm gonna ask I'm gonna ask everybody everybody to mute until they come on and speak because there's somebody there's some background somewhere. So if everybody mutes unless they're speaking and then when you unmute then Franny, can you tell when people unmute Franny? Yes. Yeah, because okay. so maybe that's a way to get on and stuff like that. But go ahead. Sorry. Okay. That's okay. Franny. When you were acting um, in your your skits or whatever you call it, and you talked about your your experiences, was that part of the healing that you felt, or what? Because you were saying it kind of made you at times feel, oh my God, and, and you kind of closed up. But was it part of your healing? Oh, absolutely, Brachla. I call Bracha Brachla. You know, um. It was. I mean, at the time, I, I wasn't, you know, con I majored in theater in university at the age of 15. I, I, uh, the, listen, I was completely, sh so my answer is yes, but I, I'll just tell you a little bit of the kind of 
uh, arc of, of how I got there. It, it, when I was in boarding school, I was totally shut down because I, I really need to say that, that the reason there's so many things going on in my head at the same time, which is so unlike me. But, uh, you know, when, when I was in boarding school and as a little girl, I was, you know, conditioned to believe that the world was not a safe place. Yeah. And so I did not trust the world. When I was nine years old, it I, I really went quite dramatically from, you know, being a fairly not, you know, listen, the, my the home environment, my parents were not the happiest of humans. They were Holocaust survivors and they had been through hell and they were doing the best they could. But it was not the most light. You know, it wasn't, uh, you know, the, there's a reason my first play is called The Walton Steins, mm -hmm. because the Waltons. Uh, was, you know, a 70s sitcom about just very loosely, a, you know, a um, a Gentile family that was very, you know, pretty happy. They were poor, but they were happy and they lived on a hill. And right. we were, were not Gentile and, you know, we, we didn't live on a hill and we we weren't really happy. So my play was called The Walton Dines because it was, a you know, a dark uh, satirical send up of yeah. the truth of our story. So, so anyway, I went from the age of nine, to, uh, you know, being, you know, kind of like watching Walt Disney and having kind of a technicolor uh, childhood yeah. to to the degree that I knew that I, I had in this incarnation. And then all of a sudden my father divulged a secret that you see what we were brought up Roman Catholic. Um, I thought we were Catholic. I went to Catholic grammar school. We went to church every Sunday religiously. Uh, wow. I have four names. Francis Rose Mary Sheridan, my last name's Sheridan, you know, um, and uh, everybody I knew was Christian, and I didn't know anything else. My parents had European accents. My mom, you know, she talked with this German Jewish accent, and my dad was Viennese, and I figured, you know, their traditions, like on Friday, my mom would make uh, what I thought was called, you know, she called German dumpling soup, but it was matzo ball soup. And we had all these kind of, you know, things at home that I, you know, I had no idea. Like she would make, you know, um, there, there's a cookie, a Jewish cookie, for those of you who don't know, called hamantaschen, which oh is God. in the shape of a triangle. And my mother would call it, you know. Uh, triangle cookies. That's what, you know, we didn't know that we yeah. were anything except what we are, because when you're a little mm -hmm. kid, like, you know, if you don't have a comparison chart, I didn't have any, I didn't know what Jewish was. There weren't certainly any, anything about the Holocaust on uh, television. I mean, there's Hogan's Heroes, but for whatever yeah. reason, my it made my mother cry. That's all I knew. And, and yeah. a lot of Holocaust survivors or, or people who've experienced things can laugh at it, but it depends where you're at with your healing. At yeah. the time, I didn't know. I had no idea. I And then all of a sudden, one day dinner, my dad said something, you know, I don't know, a Jewish. And I was like, well, daddy, what's a Jewish? And then he began to tell me, you know, that it, and it, I knew it was something very dark and scary. I didn't understand much, but it, it shocked me. And then he began uh, to tell me Holocaust stories at night when, you know, these, uh, he was tortured by his inner demons yeah. and he would wake me up and tell me these stories. And mm -hmm. so all of a sudden I flipped like from my childhood wow. being pretty carefree into the thing. So anyway, just to fast forward to answer your question, okay. uh, Baha, it's, you know, um, and so I was not an, a, an expressive person, a little girl uh, anymore. Apparently I was as a, my, my, you know, sisters tell me that I was, uh, you know, I wanted to be an actress when I was little. And I don't even remember these things that I was pretty animated. And yeah. It was in, my, it was like in my DNA. Go ahead. Sorry. No, no, I said, that's interesting. Well, yeah, you, you yeah. And I mean, it might have been one of my soul's sort of packs before I yeah. even incarnated. Who knows? Right. And so um, but I was completely shut down, I, I, you know, and um, and so I went to boarding school very young at the age of 11. My you know, my dad sent me away all of a sudden to school. And I don't exactly know why, but I will tell you that even though it was very, very difficult, because all of a sudden uh, he was the only person in the world that I trusted, do you know, at that time, because he bas he painted a picture repeatedly that the world was not a safe place. And right. he became very uh, ill, very emotionally sick, because um, as we all know, when we hide 
uh, our identity to such a degree that you're in terror. And of course, there are times if you're in a, you know, a toxic environment where there are, you know, people who actually uh, want to kill you for who you are, you're not going to, you know, open your mouth and, you know, risk your life. But, but um, my, my parents had a real schism in the family and my mother wanted to be Jewish. It was a big part of her identity and her a mother, my maternal grandmother had been murdered on Kristallnacht in uh, the night of the broken glass in uh, Germany. And that's documented by the way, in a book called the rise and fall of the third Reich. And I have my mother's book here. And so they had a very toxic uh, marriage at this point. I mean, obviously something was working at some point. I have, you know, they have seven kids, you know, we're all from the same family, although you don't know about these things, but no, there was, I remember, you know, there were, there were times when they, there was the, the love was there for sure. But, uh, I don't really remember a lot of it by the time I came around. I was the second youngest kid. And so, um, you know, as far as using theater as a uh, vehicle for healing, Bracha, like, you know, I certainly wasn't involved in theater in boarding school, except in drama class. Uh, once um, my drama teacher, we were working on a, a scene from Romeo and Juliet and the alchemy, the feeling of being, uh, I felt safe in the dark, uh, lit up by a light. And wow. there was wow. something that happened, something that, yeah, transpired, transformed me. And I, oh. I, I, I got the bug, I got the bug or I remembered the bug or something. And so so I think the audience responding also with the clapping and liking it and laughing with you was probably also very well. They didn't. They didn't to get to they, have. Yes, but at that point with that scene, it was you know Romeo and Juliet. It was not. It was in in my drama class, so it wasn't like right. a performance, and um and it, well, it was talking. just a feeling. It was a feeling of yeah. using my voice in a mm -hmm. way that I never had, and that. Uh, that actually I had a moment of safety or comfort or something in that scene. Like it was just a scene. And, and anyway, something in me thought uh, by the time um, it was time to make a decision as to what direction I wanted to go, you know, you can have a general, you know, kind of going to college experience, but, oh, I, I was really young. So I was only 15 when I graduated and started yeah. university and I had to live with my eldest sister who uh, uh, is, what, is just retired a few years ago, was an ophthalmologist, like my dad was in uh, Upper State New York. And so I auditioned for uh, State University of New York in the theater department. Um, and I really was very uncomfortable with who I was, but there's something in me that was excited about <laughs> performance. And so, yes, it became very therapeutic, but it also became very difficult because those demons kept coming up, Raha, right? That's the thing. And my teachers didn't understand because I would be doing extremely well as this young, you know, very m younger than most freshmen. And I got like sort of press in the small town where this, you know, say University of New York was not upper state in Oswego. And, and, um, and so it, it, it was, and I was addicted to the, um, to the desire when it, because when it worked, it was wonderful, but I was also extremely ripped up because I didn't know why these things, these gates would come up. And, and of course it was simply because I was uncomfortable being my authentic self because the programming, the old program, <laughs> pointing to my brainstem, I think, kept kicking in, you know, and I hadn't replaced it with a new program and nobody had the language or the understanding to tell me uh, what was going on at that point. So yes, it certainly, it might, my, you know, it, it was uh, therapy on wheels as time went on, it, 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 the difficult parts as well. But, um, but uh, I, at the time it was just, it, it was my journey. Well, you've come a long way, darling. I'm so <laughs> proud of you. I really am. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Braha. It's, you know what, and here, and I say this and it's so true. We've all, every single one of us, as you know, and as Esther Hicks always talks about, right, is, you know, we didn't come for a feathered nest. Okay. It is such a gift 
It was such a gift because I would not uh, honestly change a thing, like not a single drop. Not only is this perfect, and just to and just to respond to, to Karen, you you speaking to the fact that you wrote this magnificent story about your healing journey, but it's not who you are, so you wouldn't want to bring it up again. I feel that way about big chunks of my story. However, because I am so allowing most of the time of my joy and silliness and uneditedness and all that for me to speak like this with you i can't think of a more perfect uh, place because i i don't i don't go back there into the darkness good you know, you. And, <laughs> oh, i think I mary have a question yes please mary. oh hey danny thank you so <laughs> I just find it, I don't know how I find it. I found it and it's here in my lap. Um, Franny, you and I had similar parenting. Oh. Um, so my mom's last words to me when she passed, I should have killed you a long time ago. Oh. Um, but what she did for me was she introduced me to classical ballet. Oh. And for 22 years, me performing on stage, classical ballerina was my refuge from her. Yes. So she was this poor God bless her little creature. Wow. Suffering, demented and tortured little creature gave me this gift of a moment of a nanosecond and the universe exploded it for me. Wow. 22 years. I mean, you know, so whoever, all of us, we have our ugly nightmares, traumas, but they're also gifts. Always. Wow. Right? They are oh. also gifts. And I remember... I mean, besides the four times that my mom actually tried to kill me, Ugh. three times with a gun to my head, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what I choose now because of you, Franny Sheridan, helping me understand and accept what I choose now is to remember the beautiful moments of all the magnificent dresses and costumes that she created for me as a seamstress. Wow. Had the best <laughs> costumes. I had the, wow. the best holiday dresses, handmade, hand-designed, by this woman who was tortured yeah. mentally, but her creative genius gifted me. Wow. With, <laughs> oh, just the most dynamic. And I'm sorry, Indy's, <laughs> I gotta take Indy outside right now. She's gotta I go. You, you, you made the hairs on my body stand up. That was such an profound sharing mary yep. and boy do you shine do you shine yeah and boy what a story you have love oh. you come back come back come back we love you i'll be right back i gotta take it take your time. time take your time take your time wow well i want to speak to to one thing yeah wow well, it's right right whoa and that's the gift that you know mary was the one who asked like um you know 
what, what, or, or, or no, it wasn't. It was Rochelle. You asked, I think. Okay, Bracha, Rochelle. I, I was, somebody asked, you know, if 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 it was my therapy, and and the point is, it 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 it, it is so. It is such a gift, I find. Like when I performed the play, and you know, the ultimate thing was was you know, and I, I had the opportunity to do this for decades. That the audience members that would come backstage and and share these incredible jewels, right? You know, so it's just it's just that's the thing is we're all one. We all have had our our various forms of contrast, and and very dramatic, and 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 some not so dramatic that. It's, it's, and that's almost worse in a way because you can't discern yeah. like right. what it is, right? But but we've all had our our contrast in different ways, and and I I don't know again if it's like you know part of our soul's journey before we come we incarnate that we're going to have these some of these experiences, and then of course there's free will always always, and you know law of attraction and all that stuff obviously. But whatever whatever it is, it's it's always such an incredible gift to be able to get past the pain and the and the and the blame and the shame and the and you know and and the anxiety as much as we can. And it's a lifelong journey and to, and to forgive and become you know really if there's one thing that I would wish uh, for the younger self of me of Franny. Uh, is you know if I could have been kinder to myself and 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 less hard on myself for not being you know perfect whatever that is um, because boy we all have our journey and and that's the thing I love what Mary said about how she's you know the, the costumes the beautiful things that and, and right. what good does it do at a certain point to 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 um, you know, yeah, of course you want to get out any, anything toxic that you might've been holding on, but what is, what good is it at, at some point to, to point the finger and say, we've had these horrors in our life. It's just as, as Esther Hicks often says, you know, it's, it's, it, we're just bringing that vibration back and reenacting it. And, and it's always there. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I think someone was talking and I want to hear it. No, was it in my head? <laughs> um. Hi, Lynn. Oh, my goodness. I can't believe everyone's here. Okay. <gasps> Laura Jaffe. Is it Laura Jaffe really here? Okay. I'm going to be quiet. <laughs> Racha is speaking. Okay. Nope. I'm not no? speaking. Nope. Go ahead. It's interesting how it, it goes It goes in and out with this. You know, this reminds me of a Christmas advent calendar. Are there chocolates behind everybody? Because if so, can you just give them to me now? <laughs> I don't no, know. you won't get chocolates behind me. Perhaps a good bottle of spice drum. <laughs> to which? Mm -hmm. A little spice drum. Mm -hmm. Say again, Don. I, I will say it again. Oh. You will not get, get oh, teeth in, Jonathan. You will not get chocolate behind me. I got that. Probably just get a good bottle of spiced rum. <laughs> oh, spiced rum. Yeah. Oh, I'd love some spiced rum, especially this time of night. Yeah. It's like hot, toddy. hot. Make it hot. Yeah, exactly. A hot, make it hot, hot toddy. That sounds yummy, Jonathan Mellers. <laughs> Jonathan Mellers. But that whole thing of being here and, you know, reflecting back to all of you, the, 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 the silliness joy that that's where I am living most of the time. Um, and, and, and so um, that, that is so important. And, you know, I so get what you're saying, Karen, about not wanting to go back to certain stories because they're not reflective of where you are. That's why I, I I got to a place where I stopped performing my play after decades of doing it, and because it was toxic, it was like ripping off a bandaid or or a scab. At mm -hmm. some, it was very therapeutic, and then it 
it became really not good for me at all. And it was hard to stop, not because I didn't want to, but people kept wanting to book the play mm-hmm. <laughs> and really kind of begged me. I mean, I don't mean that, you know, I'm uh, whatever, but it's just, that's what happened. And I finally just thought, mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. I didn't know what I was going to do. I actually went through big depression because the play had become my identity for a long time and I was lost and my husband Danny knows this right when I stopped doing the play I was really depressed I I but I knew I had to do something else and so I went back to stand up and I went back to to things that had brought me bits and large doses of joy incrementally and I went back to this and that and it took me a while and I have to tell you you know uh, for all the, the difficulties, and I no way am I whew, uh, undermining anyone's, uh, you know, challenges with what we've been going through the past few years, but this whole time has been such a gift as well uh, to me, because I had never done a live stream. I mean, I, you know, uh, the whole kind of internet concept and finding my way into just being a, a babylosaurus. And uh, letting it all rip in, 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 and now under the guise of, you know, dance and disco mania is the most joy I think I've ever had. And I've said this to you, Danny, haven't I? You know, what's happening is I can hear you say yes in the yes. other room, but yes. nobody can, I don't think we can hear you here. Can yes. you hear Dan? Yes. Okay. Now I can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, I, yes. I can hear him. I can hear him. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yep. Great. I confirm. <laughs> You concur, you concur, eh, Danny? <laughs> yeah, concur, yes. He's yeah. concurring. Well, I felt a little needy there for a minute. I just wanted to, no, I just wanted to make the speaker muted. Um, but so this is the coolest, I think, uh, you know, chat, interview, whatever you want to call it, that I think I'm ever going to have because, like, you know, the person interviewed me. I had a few interviews this week already about the book. And, and you know, as I was saying, one person was was saying, you know, are you going to read, you know, are you going to do the play again and this and that? And, and I've done it. So I get it, Karen. It's just not reflective of where I am now, nor is it healthy for me. And then he said, you know, why don't you give it to another actor? I mean, you can really monetize it and that. And maybe down the road, I don't even, because then I would have to, you know, finagle with a script and, and all that. I don't know that I want to, like, there's certain parts, you know, of our life that we go through and we, and they're th- for all of us, obviously. And, you know, that are therapeutic to deal with at the time. And, and then at some point it's just, what mm-hmm. good does it do? And we started this conversation even before we started taping today, right, Karen, which is about what is, you know, this, just in terms of where we are in the world, like, do we want to get into the uh, anxiety? And, 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 and as far as I'm concerned, the worst virus is the fear virus. And, and, you know, really just with any kind of toxic, you know, physical, mental, whatever, right, the dis-ease, lack of ease, you know, all these um, terms are so relevant. And, it, it does nothing, uh, you know, of course, be, you know, letting yourself have your feelings is a different thing. But then again, I went through a period, I don't know if anyone can relate to this, where when I was younger, uh, I thought I was my feelings. In other words, mm-hmm. I didn't know how to get out of the dark feelings because yeah. they had become so much of what I believed the world really was. I didn't know that one could be lighthearted. Uh, right. Certainly not. Oh, okay. right. 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 Yes, Rochelle. Yes. Yeah. 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 Right. Totally. Totally. Uh-huh. And it takes a while when you come from, you know, so much trauma or darkness or whatever you want to call it to, you know, well, in my case, I just thought, you know, there must be something terribly wrong with me because why else would, you know, everybody want to kill us, me, the family, Jews, whatever the deal is. And so I walked around with this shame, right? Shame. And and when you're hiding, whether you happen to be, you know, a, a gay person or, or whatever, a different gen, you know, whatever your deal is, whatever you're, if there's something that you feel is wrong with you and, um, 
even if you're not hiding it, that is such a, you know, we're all love. And it took me a long time <laughs> to allow that truth back in, you know, and I'm so glad. So this is just so much what I want to convey with my book. And yes, of course, I share the story because I don't know about anyone else here, but for me, you know, especially when I was going through darker periods of my life, reading biographies, not biographies, helped me significantly, made me feel like other people went through different but similar and got through it because, you know, there wasn't always a, a happy ending, but I, I didn't feel so alone. You know, I didn't feel um, like um, trapped because I often felt like I had, and, and of course, we all know that, you know, we make our own prisons, even if you're in prison, yeah. like Mandela yeah. is a great example, right? So, yeah. but, um, you know, I felt very, very that and, and I didn't know what I was, you know, until we all know that we are creating our own, that this is no way and no way am I justifying it. You can make that thing. lower now because I've got my ears on. Make what lower? I was picking beans. <laughs> did you hear me did i brett fucked in with that and didn't mean to i apologize <laughs> no problem i don't even know who's talking i'm so excited it's, it's laura <laughs> i i've been sick all day today i had my third booster shot and by golly mm -hmm. it wiped me out so um Thanks. that's why i'm just kind of I, I wasn't going to be on and I wasn't going to show my face oh. because I'm not dressed. Or, so forgive oh. me. I'm going back to just listening, which is wonderful. Oh, is that Laura talking? Laura. That's yes. Laura. Oh, oh, let's say love to Laura. And by the way, I caught that you were doing that early, Maria. Maria Mata. You were sending love through your hands. Can you hear me, honey? Yeah, okay. Ooh. Why don't we send some love to Laura Jaffe from our hearts, some healing, some joy, some love. Hi, Laura. We're going to give you a love Hi, booster. Hi, Laura. Hi, Laura. Sad, babe. Hi, Laura. Peace, love. It will pass. <laughs> love you, Laura. 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 Oh. Feel better. There you go. Thank you all. Thank yep. you all. I'm uplifted yeah. already. Thank Laura. you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad to hear it. For a second. <laughs> now, Granny, yes. Has, my book is being traditionally published. She she keeps saying it. Now I'm going to be honest with you, Franny. I am not that big a reader. However, listen, please. Will your book be available as an ebook and possibly an audio book? Also, some people will, may have wanted to ask this, but have not asked it. <laughs> I understood every nuance. <laughs> um, oh, you're so cute, Jonathan Mellors. Well, here's the thing is it is being publicly released October 28th as a hard copy and an ebook by my publisher. Good. Um, the uh, audio version isn't happening yet, but perhaps down the road. But um, what I can leave links, whatever you, Karen and Mark you want me to do. But um, uh, you know, my uh, there are two things. Um, the hard copy autographed will be available. Oh, you're talking about ebook, but but I will just say, hard autograph hard copies will be available through my website in a few weeks. But right now, uh, my publisher is offering a thirty percent early boy, oily boy special, oily boy. darling, yeah. oily, oily boy, <laughs> through his through his uh, website. 30% off for the ebooks or the hard copies, which are not available, as I said earlier publicly until October 28th, but apparently people who go for the special are first in line to receive them when they are made, you know, available on the 20th. So I will leave that there. And so the ebook will be available. <laughs> Thank you for asking. You John. have to be there between four and seven. It's an early bird special. <laughs> 
early bird. Is he from Brooklyn? <laughs> yes, yes. And there'll be a lot of pushing and shoving. <laughs> Funny. I married him for a reason. Now, uh, Karen had asked how we met. Maybe this is a good segue because you know I'm all about the seamless segue. <laughs> well, uh, we met like this on the internet. <laughs> yeah, we did. We did. We met through a toaster. Where's John Williams? Danny and I met through a toaster. We did. <laughs> We, we met, of course. Okay, so listen. So here's the thing. I uh, Okay, anyway, in a nutshell, we met through uh, J-Date, darling. J-Date, which is the oh. Jewish dating. And um, I... Uh, 15 Danny, years ago. Yes. And, and Danny seduced me with the chat because what did you say now? And said, I could, let's, let's have a, a glass of wine. I said, let's have a bottle of wine. He said, let's have a bottle. And at the time, I was very into Merlot, into the Merlot. Oh, me too. So, you're right. And I thought, well, that's it. I just wanted to have fun. I was, um, I had to move to Los Angeles. In I had been, it was three weeks, I think, but I was still on this dating site. And to be completely truthful, and here's the silliness, right? Uh, we all have our prejudices or our, shall we, I try not to, but we're all conditioned. And I had, shall we say, not the happiest experience with Mediterranean, a Mediterranean man in my past. So um, when I found out, you know, when I realized where Danny was from, I thought, oh, I don't know if this is even a good idea to, but he completely entranced me with his patter. So... Um, uh Use Mediterranean charm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he brought me a bouquet of hummus and that was it. <laughs> well, it was it was gazy, but it was good. But no, and so we um we actually met our first date. Uh almost didn't happen because uh, oh for a few Boca. reasons. It was Boca and there was like crazy, you know, driving and this and that. but we ended up meeting. I always screen people by meeting. Uh, for coffee and oh here's it oh yeah so at, for, he thought I was just a freak because which is hard to believe but no because I always brought my computer because I didn't want to waste time and I it was you know my comfort zone and everything and so I was sitting at Starbucks uh by the time I got there wearing layers because I freeze in the air conditioning there and you know typing away and I was like because mm -hmm, I really wasn't sure about the whole Mediterranean thing and so and he sees this kind of strange person who is not really making a lot of eye contact with him and hiding and he was not impressed until well I gave her 20 minutes for the cup of coffee and I said after that we go buy and, and leave and then she got up oh. and I saw what a beautiful body she has. So I said, okay, I'm not leaving. Let me be, I'm going to cut through it. He was entranced by the tuchas. The tuchas. This yeah. is the tuchas got me. He <laughs> handled the truth. The tuchas got me. He was entranced by the tuchas. Is that the so derriere? Oh, the derriere. Oh, oh, the oh, oh, the oh, way over there, I was driving this old Mercedes that was like 20 years old collection, you know, and it was getting, it was traffic, so it was getting almost overheat. So, uh, like a delay before we got to Boca. And I it said, was That's very it. Very tourist, it was overheating. And yeah. And I said, Okay, I'm making a U turn and I'm leaving. That's it because it's too much traffic and the car is getting hot. But the traffic suddenly opened and I made it 15 years later. Aww. It was really, but, but here's the thing is we stayed for hours talking. We really had yes. a connection. And you know, what, what I wanted to be with somebody, you know, we all have our kind of list. I wanted to be with somebody who was fun. I wanted to be with somebody who was warm. I wanted to be with somebody who I could talk with. Um, uh, somebody who Someone was a gentleman. drink wine and eat cakes. Yeah, that was part of my joie de vivre at that time, right? And, and, and where it, it, um, where it was about, uh, you know, companionship in a really lovely, loving sense and enjoy and, and where there, it, they didn't, there was, I felt like someone who was present. I mean, we all have our things, right? And so that to me was more important than anything. 
And uh, we really hit it off. And uh, our first date, we were there for out, like we were there until, until we two o'clock or something. We moved from Starbucks to the restaurants next the door. The restaurant. And this was in a Meisner Park. Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. We closed the place. And we closed the place and we danced and, and we had dinner and Danny was great, he took me for dinner. And then he was a total gentleman and walked me to the car. Total gentleman. And just, and then, so anyway, so we had a succession of dates. And, next date um, was the same story. We went to restaurants, Spanish restaurants in Delray, and we stayed until four o'clock in the morning. We closed the place too. We, yeah, we really had that connection. And that was, you know, just such a, you don't, you can't create that with somebody. You know what I mean? It was just lovely. And then I, I uh, uh, so uh, by that time, those of you who know uh, some of my story, I had the incredible privilege of working um, uh, with uh, uh, a very uh, well-known you know, the film director who at that time, uh, Arthur Hiller, who directed Love Story and, and many, many, many films. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and so he was, uh, he was, he had macular degeneration. He was 84 or five at that time. Well, yeah, at that time. And, and he was, you know, going blind and, uh, you know, Ironically, my father, who was an ophthalmologist and eye surgeon, also developed macular degeneration. So uh, very, you know, for people who use their eyesight in their um, careers, uh, obviously a particularly challenging loss. So I, I was panicking because Arthur and I had worked together for many years. He uh, had attached himself to direct uh, the film, the film version of my play, which I'd written as a multicast um, screenplay. And he was going to, you know, bring it to the screen. Um, but I started to panic because we worked together for so long. And there had been, you know, we'd had some deals with different people and they worked and then they fell through and whatever. It's too long when to get into. But so I thought, oh, I better move to Los Angeles where I really didn't want to live. But, um, you know, maybe I can just read him my uh, drafts, the drafts of my screenplay, because I didn't want to go through his assistant. It's just a whole different thing when it's a third party. So that was my motivation. So when I met Danny, uh, I had already uh, decided I was going to move, packed up all my stuff. And um, so we met and three weeks later, I was going to move to Los Angeles. Danny was living. OK, this is getting very long winded. The point is, I moved there, but Danny was a total gentleman and said, why don't you have, you know, we we talked about how I'd never lived in LA. I'd gone there to work with Arthur and stuff in the past, but I didn't know the city. So he said, I have an apartment uh, that doesn't have a tenant now. Why don't you stay there? Because I'd given up my apartment. That was it. And then, and take your time and hire a service or something to find yourself a uh, an apartment in LA. Since you don't know this, oh, I was going to drive my car out there too. I just remembered. And Danny thought that was insane because it was a LeBaroness. You know, from the LeBaroness? It's too far. It's too far. It's a coast, coast country. It's too far. Right. And it wasn't like it was a big SUV. You know what I mean? It was a it was a pretty car, but it was not, you know. So anyway, so um, I ended up, okay, I got a truck. Anyway, so what, I got a truck about it and I moved there. So we had an open relationship for a year, which was super healthy because I didn't know if I was going to move back. We had just met. Um, Danny flew I was to living in New York, living in New York, and would fly to LA to see me. It was all very romantic. We really got to know each other as friends, and um, and I got to know a lot of the restaurants. Although you were not thrilled that about the dating thing and all that, at the same time. Um, I got to know, you know, from going out on these dates, the best restaurants. So then whenever Danny came, we went there and he flew me to Florida and we were, we talked for hours and oh, hours every day. single day on the phone. So after a year, you know, Arthur was, you know, not getting any better and he was still trying to get the film made, but I was sad, you know, about that. And, um, and I didn't fall in love with LA. And I fell in love with Danny. So I thought, what am I, why am I not with my best friend every single day? So I gave him a very unhealthy ultimatum. And I said, I'm moving back to Florida, which I always loved. My father used to bring, one of the best things with my dad is he brought me here when I was a little girl. Uh, my eldest sister was doing her residency in Miami. Um, and um, and I, I instantly, you know, was enamored with 
the heat and the beauty of Florida and, and how multi-ethnic it was. It was just so not Canadian and at that time. I mean, things have changed since then. And, um, and I never wanted to leave Florida uh, to, to be in California, to be honest. I just, it was because of the project. And so I said to Danny, you come move down from New York to Florida and let's commit and make it, you know, a, a go of it. Um, or else I think we should move on. I mean, it was like totally an unhealthy ultimatum. Wow. And Danny did. Very, very good and healthy one. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, we had, you know, it was, right. I mean, we have zero regrets. I, I mean, zero. you know, <laughs> but you can't plan these things. We both, you know, wanted to allow our healing and allow our, you know, so that the ego isn't the dark ego, isn't the one. Yeah. I'm right. Yeah. You know what I mean? All that, you know, it's just, it's, it's a journey of, of friendship and joy. And, and, um, and I, it's the best Florida. thing I've done in my life. Pardon? We love Florida. And we love Florida. We love Florida. Yes. Yes. Miss Mouse house. Yes. yes. Right. Yes. And, 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 and the whole, every place has its charms for sure. But um, it's, it's really, you know, one of the biggest gifts when you can <sighs> listen, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate being with other like-minded loving people, certainly in my marriage. And, and, you know, I, I won the jackpot there for sure. But as far as, you know, being able to, to, when I say you keep me in my love lane, you, you, you all do, you really do. I, you know, it is such a, a, one of the biggest gifts of this time is to be able to connect and the intimacy of doing this, you know, is, is, is enormous. I mean, does, does, do you feel similarly to being able to use the internet to, to be able to have this, this intimacy with, with, I mean, we're all, you know, obviously differences of opinion and, 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 how boring it would be if, you know, actually, you know, like, like Esther says, why isn't everyone just like me? You know, you think, but <laughs> why, you know, right? it would be so much easier, but isn't this just the greatest thing to be able to be with the Karen Money Williams created group? Yay. Yes. Yay. Absolutely. <laughs> love you, Jen Williams. Love you. <laughs> love you. Love you. Love you. <laughs> uh -oh. Oh, I it's just such a treat. Go on, so. Love all of you. Really? I mean, love it's just too, delicious. John. All right. So um, what else do you want to know? I'm an open book. Get it? <laughs> yeah. hmm. Nothing? There's a pun in there somewhere. <laughs> um, <laughs> Can I ask Jeremy. a couple questions? Yeah. Uh, hi, no, hi, hi, hi. Um, before we go on to questions, Franny. Oh. Okay, go ahead. Your energy is infectious and I unconditionally love you. Oh. Oh. Jonathan. Thank you, Jonathan. And I really allow myself to take that in. And it's so important for us to, uh, and it took me a while to get there to allow ourselves to feel the love that we are, it, you know, because I, I, and I remind myself, you know, in various ways that, and this is something that it took me a long time to remember or to allow is that we are the love. We are, we are all that, but to actually, allow myself to feel what you said and to take it in has been a journey and it is so great and and it doesn't mean i'm oh, vulnerable. anything when jonathan doesn't like me i'm gonna just you know cry. but i used to sort of be scared of that and i think so many of us are because it's still society is so much about you know and they're wrong to do that and they're right to do i mean it's just diversity rocks like let us just love Let's just love people. And I mean, obviously, again, I'm not saying I'm never condoning, you know, abuse, right? We, we're not doing that. But but um, yeah, it's just it's it's we love each other. And that's it. And we all have our unique 
uh, gifts. And thank you, thank you for saying that, Jonathan. It's a big deal. Yeah. And what were you going to say, Lynn? Um, <laughs> oh, hi. Um, I, you know, I, I, I feel I, I get a little quiet on these group things because I don't want to mess up the, uh, you know, the flow. But um, <laughs> oh, the flow. You were so in the flow. Uh, thank, oh, it's great to see you here, and and thank you, Karen and uh mark and uh and crazy danny too um and everybody um i i just got had a couple of like little questions that popped up with your story first of all franny i mean for i, I mean i i feel you know I, I i'm sorry you had to go through all of that you know i mean I, but i know looking through it through at it through the like the apex philosophy and this metaphysical thing you know we see it differently but there is part of me that feels bad that you had to go through that so I, I just want to say that and and I think it's it's beautiful and very courageous and and um, a healing example that you're sharing it in this way and bringing it to a sort of a, a different um, perspective now because like what you're saying about you don't want to get too caught up in the in the negative part of the stories and yet it's sort of like finding that balance right of sharing it and then not really immersing yourself too much in it where it's going to mess you up you know right right uh and because sometimes uh, like esther uh abe hicks would say about you know like um you know share your story and then like and then don't like you know don't talk about it <laughs> it's like much there or right. share it yeah. way, right or share it in the way that it it feels i guess empowering i think they say something like that you know like the, the good parts of it you know or or how you see it now but anyway um i'm sure it helps a ton of people uh the other thing was just about comedy in general. I, I heard recently that I think comedians, is it more of a trend now than maybe it was in the past where comedians, um, I, I think they said it, it's more like they're, they're sharing more about their lives now as part of their mm -hmm. stand-up act than maybe in the, in the past. Is that like a, a, a new focus that they're doing? Well, it seemed to, uh, the trajectory shifted uh, at some point uh, when I was doing stand-up. Yeah, and it became, not only did it, 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 like any kind of vaudevillian or sort of, you know, ba-boom ching, set up punch. Right, right. It was really, it's now it's a lot more storytelling and there are positive and negatives to both worlds. I, um, you know, I, I love a lot of the older comedians uh, as well. I love, I love that. And, you know, and some of it is just so angry, just like right. really, really right. angry that quite frankly, sitting in an audience in some of these clubs is, uh, it doesn't bring joy to me. Right. Um, so it just depends on the, the, but yes, there is something about it, the self-revelatory uh, mode of standup that, that shifted and, and became, more vogue i think the more that society was a reflection right you know as you know like all art is is a, is a reflection was letting go of 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 the the veils of pretense more and more that became more reflective but um you know and and the authentic the authenticity of that i think is is really good i will tell you i give huge credit to uh, Mark Breslin, who happens to be the, the person who owns the Canadian comedy clubs called Yuck Yucks, which is similar akin to, you know, the American improv, because oh. he really was, he really g gave me and a lot of comedians a form, a platform to express our, our voices oh. in a way that, you know, by telling uh, you know, by telling the truth of who we are. And um, he also was the very first person, I would say, in my life who um, who heard me, who actually like heard me wow. um, and and asked me if, uh, after, you know, because um, so so I, I'm getting off. Uh, that's, a, a, a you know, another trajectory. But I, I, just to answer what you were saying, you know, yeah, there that is that is a big thing. And and, um, you know, call me old fashioned. I really just like being around um, not, you know, comedy that makes me feel good. I'm not saying I don't yeah. want challenged, but there is that sort of, you know, Oh, aggressive I, I, kind of, yeah blaming I, I totally and, hear you yeah because I, yeah. I i'm very selective with the kind of comedy i even i watch you know i yeah. like the ones that's more positive and not like complaining about everything 
Um, yeah. I mean, I watched some of this stuff a little bit about complaining with that's funny, but if it's very like angry, um, but yeah, but the, well, I, didn't, I didn't realize that people were doing that because I, I think maybe it was the special about Canadian comics actually. Oh, that, but they were talking about how they're sharing these authentic stories, like somebody's talking about like the wife that had cancer, the other one's talking about she was in abusive right. relationships, you know. Uh, I just found that interesting because I don't like growing up watching comedians. I don't really remember them getting into that kind of um, true. that that did sort of um, evolve. evolve. I remember seeing that a lot more as stand ups were, were under the umbrella of it being comedy. We're really telling doing one person shows. And that was a new thing. But um, uh I will say that, you know, probably many of you know that Seinfeld said that comedy was just funny complaining. And there's <laughs> truth in that. Right, but right, right. But it's, is it more complaint? It's levels, like, and as you know, like, so it's like, is it more complaining and blaming or is it more funny? And it's that's the thing. And, and so, yeah, the whole sort of solo show thing, like when I did my show, which was n- when I first did it in 1995, when I first started writing it, there wasn't, you know, I got the inspiration to do that in that format as a solo show because I pirated uh, Whoopi Goldberg's Broadway show, um, you know, yeah. that, she, yeah, which I loved. And she did these wow. characters and I, I used to watch it over and over. And, and those were things that influenced me, but yeah. it wasn't like what you're talking about. It wasn't, you know, that, that, it, that is a real becoming. Yeah. It's interesting yeah. to watch how, you know, um, how things, uh, you know, morph yeah. uh, according to how the world is, is changing mm-hmm. for sure. It's right. like reality and, and- comedy. It's like reality comedy. Yes, right. right. Who said that? Bracha? Bracha. I'm reality looking for comedy. you. I'm looking for you on the advent calendar. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, all right, sorry. I think I'm on sensory overload. I love this. That's okay. Uh, and say it again, what you said, dear. I said it's almost like reality comedy. Yes, it is. And uh, also, though, I, you know, so again, there's that thing, right? Re- wh- whose reality is it? And, and what what are we feeding? Like, re- it goes back to that thing of like choice of, um, you know, do we want it? Wh- what, like what a- a- Esther speaks to, you know, how much of your story do you want to share that is good for you? Mm-hmm. And um, there is 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 a a cost that I have found. Now it's obviously different for, I know when she talks, for example, about singers who sing sad songs. And she said, you know, I remember her saying many of them have committed suicide. The sad, like there is a cost to all of us. I, because I think we are as powerful as we are and as eternal as we are, you know, there's a cost to, uh, you know, staying in, in, in the darkness with our beings emotionally in our personal life and as creators in whatever form, um, how can there not be, you know, we are, we are in these meat suits, right? We're in our, our body temple. So it's, there's gotta be a cost. So I think that, um, you know, the, the, the darkness of comedy getting there and, 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 and who, which God are we, you know, my father used to say this very dramatic thing, you know, don't, don't have, he, this is Viennese Jewish accent, don't sell your soul to the devil, you know, <laughs> and it's a very dramatic thing, but it really, I mean, you know, the point is what he was saying is, I think on uh, many different levels is th- that, and it's so ironic coming from my dad, who was so trapped in this, you know, a holocaustica and, and the terror, um, but if we uh, focusing on the darkness, whether it's in the in in the guise of entertainment, uh, if you know to get you know um, uh, uh, famous and 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 all that sort of stuff, um, or, or, or you know it's it's an interesting question. Like, what are we what are we feeding our souls? And I think Esther Hicks is such a genius. You know. I'm trying to remember, I was trying to remember, Karen, um, how exactly I have been so lucky to magnetize you into my life. Mm-hmm. And I, I was wondering if it was from, you know, being on Facebook and looking for 
do you remember? I, probably not. I mean, you only have, what is it now? 59,000 global <laughs> members. <laughs> I don't remember everybody's story. I, I'm not sure, Franny, but I do. The first I remember was uh, when you were in the group when it was considerably smaller. And as I said earlier, uh, before the, the recording, um, I just remember you at the mall and joining in <laughs> on our our chat one evening. And and we just got a sense of who you were and how fun you were. And um that was that was the first I remember, but I suppose maybe like a lot of folks, you were looking maybe for law of attraction groups or Abraham yep. groups or whatever, and kind of happened on us. So, Esther but. came into my, uh, you know, I allowed her in. Danny knows this. I went through, uh, you know, some some of the C. I, I try not to say the C word. Word. Not talking about carrots. Um, but I, you know, and, um, I had an experience and everyone, and I come from a, a Western medical family, you know, uh, uh, had the best intentions with the most incredible, um, you know, genius, famous doctors who had a certain whatever. And I just felt I wanted to go my own route. I didn't have the answer. I just went with my gut. And then Esther came into my cell phone one day on YouTube. I did not know who she was. Yes, I certainly had, was it, uh, 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 Tolle is uh, somebody who I'd studied and I certainly had uh, studied some of the phages and all of that, but I did not know who she was. And is it, isn't that what happened, Danny, that all of a sudden I, yeah, I suddenly it was in your cell phone, in my nowhere. cell phone. And I was like, Danny, yeah. you have to listen to this. And at first and it I was, start listening to we started listening. It was a little bit difficult to understand her languaging and stuff, but um, it, 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 it helped me as it did, you know, all of us so significantly her, her allowing and her, her message that she gets through her channeling that it, it shifted my life radically. And that, so then I fell back in love with what we all know is just the way it is anyway, law of attraction. And so, yes, I, I, I probably through Facebook just, and then here I am. So isn't it just great? Yeah. Fabulous. Beautiful. Can I say, I, I, I remember the first time I saw Franny was, I was just going through, uh, you know, the Facebook feed and I saw this woman with this huge hat <laughs> and it was the big hat and she was, like blowing kisses and saying love to you and love to and this big cat like this is very interesting <laughs> and uh, i think I, I fell in love with your show then and uh and you with, I fell in love with my hat and your yeah. hat too <laughs> I, like, I never saw a hat that big and uh and i love i actually when you and danny do the dessert things uh the do you still you're still the doing sweet that house. the, yes. the sweet house the sweet house Sweethearts. Oh, sweethearts. Right. Oh, right, right. That's right. We're not doing it, it anymore only because, you know, we are a lot healthier and oh. I don't have the time. Danny doesn't really. We, it was a blast. We had so much fun being dessert reviewers for those who yeah. may not know. It was just an excuse. It was. We didn't, we didn't <laughs> stop eating cakes. All right. Just, you know, <laughs> this uh coming week month. yeah for the whole year and so the cake eating has begun uh, for birthday. Danny. oh happy birthday happy oh, birthday it's oh, the best of the month yes happy, happy birthday. birthday you're thank a great you, thank you. couple thank you oh uh, you know and that was another thing though bra uh, or lynn rather that brought us together because my father is one of the great listen I really had so many gorgeous pieces like you did, Mary, in childhood that was, yes, very rife with trauma, right? But one of the things that my dad, who was a Viennese, you know, man who, you know, a coffee house, pastries and all that, he was crazy for pastries. I mean, when he became older, he had a round little belly and he was just, and he took me for these incredible pastries from the time I was a little girl. And he also brought me to Vienna when I was a little girl. Wow. And we went to Hotel Sacher where they actually created sacher torta and oh. uh, you know so danny also grew up, yeah <laughs> danny grew up with it with a, who's going i know i'm trying to look at my advent calendar and see who's that's okay anyway 
It's very kind of LSD trippy. So <laughs> maybe this is the way I'm thinking. Like frogs have like disco eyes where they have like a lot of different. Okay. So Danny's mom, uh, my mother-in-law is Egyptian, French, Israeli. What else, oh. honey? That pretty much French, covers it. French, Egyptian. She's, uh, wow, what a nice got mix. All, all of it. She's, uh, she's a big chef, you know? Ah. Big fire. And she Very cooked nice. amazing. So Danny grew up with this amazing homemade freaking pastry. I mean, oh, wow. homemade pastry all the time, every week. Oh, wow. How nice. Beautiful. Well, you're, you're such a great uh, match. Yeah. <laughs> And we certainly were, and so that, I'm just saying in that particular respect, when it comes to desserts, you know, we really had a bond. I mean, yeah. it sounds so freaking superficial, but it really was one of the shared loves and passions that we had. Yeah. So we turned it into a, a dessert review series, and then one thing led to the next, and we had a certain amount of a success and fun with it. We even attracted uh, Phil Rosenthal, right, yeah. from Everybody That's Feed fun. Phil. Yeah. So yeah. that was like, oh. we did. Have a lot. We had some super fun with that, but but you know, again, just like we started talking about with Karen, is you know, things have a a, yeah. a there's a timeline, and Shelf and so life. many people, I right. think, still, I think more and more people are adapting to the fact that we don't have to stay in like one profession yeah. or yeah. you know yeah. even one relationship, certainly. Mm -hmm toxic or you know one thing that you know like uh, we're so multi-dimensional and they're they're you know and, and not to say we don't have to work on things and in the in the sense of allowing in the truth of who we are and letting go of our our negative ego and stuff to to allow in whatever you want to call it healing and and more joy in your life um mm -hmm. maybe that's missing and it's a perspective shift like you know esther references but um uh, it sure is great to, to, you know, I, we are really blessed to have the luxury of companionship that, that, that is, that's pretty damn good. So beautiful, beautiful. Thank yeah. you. For well, Karen, wh wh where are we at? Do you, um, shall I expose anything else? Oh, girl, you just go for it. Well, uh, as time-wise, we are um, a little, it's a little before nine. And um, so what we generally do, I didn't mention this previously, or maybe Mark did, we we generally go to about 10. However, um, but he may cut the recording off before then, but uh, nobody is is obligated to do anything up until 10 if you have to go somewhere, you know, or have have something to do. But if uh, that's generally what we um, we if the if the speaker, the illustrious speaker needs to uh, go, then we just chit chat or whatever until about 10. So we've got another hour if you uh, so, so ch uh, choose to stay around and continue on or um, just however you want to order it, girl. Here's what I think I want to say regarding the way that I chose to write the memoir. Um, because like, as I, I started to speak of earlier, uh, I've, you know, had the privilege of reading numerous, as many of us have, excellent, uh, you know, very honest, very courageous sharings of memoirs and and autobiographies and per people's and you know movies and whatever and they'd helped me a lot at the same time because I toured for so many years doing my show so many people gave me memoirs and shared their stories and it was magnificent and um and by the time I was ready to complete the memoir I asked myself what kind of book would I want to read and I was a different person, obviously, than I had been when I was, you know, more in pain. And not that, you know, obviously things come up. We have life and losses, and this is a tricky time in the world. And, you know, although I have to say, I think it's going to be better than ever. And it already, in many ways, so much light is coming in. But, but you know, there's a, we, we, we're all going through different losses. But, but um, you know, uh, what I decided to do was to write a book that I wanted to read crazy 
as that is. And so I also want to impart this, like as somebody who has taught writing and, um, you know, uh, uh, taught workshops for quite a while to uh, p- people who have PTSD from vets to, you know, survivors of, of various genocides, you know, from many different peoples all over the world. Um, what, what I think is really important and took me a while to get to this place where I would listen to other people's opinions, people who were super accomplished, who I had great respect for. I'm, I'm not talking about abusive people at this point, because that, that was another thing. I'm talking about, re, you know, really accomplished people. And, and many of, okay, so what I wanted to do was to write a memoir that not only told the historic story about my parents to some degree, that not only uh, told my story as a little girl growing up in this difficult environment, but also talked about my journey uh, coming in the reclamation of my voice as a comedian. I wanted to weave in humor as much as I could without diluting the story. And also I wanted to put in parts of my journey that uh, society has a way of going, how dare you, shame on you. Because I felt that for me, that always makes me uh, respect somebody's courage for being honest about um, we've all had our journeys. We all have our secrets and nobody is a bad human being for what they went through. None of us, none of us are, you know, horrible people. And there's so much hypocrisy, you know, in our society in so many ways, as we all know. And I just wanted to embrace all parts of myself or, or the parts of myself that I wanted to share. So I wove in three different points of view, which is an unusual thing to do for a memoir. I had never seen anyone do that. So um, I, without getting specific with that yet, I ran that concept uh, by numerous uh, very successful writers, some not so successful writers, um, writing groups, teachers. Nobody thought it was a good idea because it hadn't been done You know what I mean? And Esther Hicks often speaks to how, you know, um, like, well, we have all those stories, the classic stories of the Wright brothers, you know, and, 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 and creating a plane and all that. And, and, you know, we, we, but, but Esther often speaks to, you know, how um, listening to, to, to other people, I don't know quite how she has, I don't remember exactly how she's worded it, but, you know, there are a lot of dream busters. Let's just get to the point. And, and, and people who might think they're doing you a favor because that, that creation, that form, that, that creative voice, that creative telling, the sharing in that capacity hasn't been done successfully, or they just simply don't like it. And that's okay. But what I wanted to say is I went ahead and wrote a memoir with three Three different points of view in it and from the feedback I've gotten so far and some people may not like it and I'm okay with that it is working and that delights me and I wanted to just mm, put that out there that's another thing that let's allow ourselves to expand what's already been done like Esther says like you know gum that you already chewed the flavor out of and and allow even if we don't know exactly how like the joy you know that she uh, I think I'm really referencing the hack at Esther but you know the, the talking about molding the clay and if this doesn't work then we go to the next thing and so I'm delighted because um you know it, it, it's 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 a kind of it's a kind of memoir that I would want to read and I'm not trying to sell it. <laughs> I'm, not. I'm just, what I'm trying to do is just say, let's push the parameters of what's already been done. If we want to, if it feels like joy, like fun, like, like not, you know what I mean? Because a lot of well-intentioned people can keep us stuck. And I allowed that in my past a lot. Um, and sometimes I stood up against that. You know what I mean? Where others may not have. I remember a film acting class I had with a very well-known actress teaching. And she was really not, shall we say, very respectful of people. And um, they put up with it because she was this big monkey muck. Well, I 
kind of talk to her and she was not impressed <laughs> with me standing up for myself. And I felt horrible at the time because I had gone through, you know, really not a lot of healing. Um, and I, of course, uh, doubted myself and thought, oh, why did I do that? I mean, privately, I didn't, I, I stopped going to her class, which I'm glad I did. But, but, you know, it's, it's so important that, we reach for the, that we allow in the joy that we reach for the joy. That's, that's really the other thing. And, um, and so this, this story, this memoir that I've shared um, talks about the fact that me, a very, uh, you know, a gal from the right, the right side of the class, of the class, of the track, of the class, right? The class structure. I mean, my parents, you know, were upper middle class, but I mean, the right side of the tracks, uh, my dad was, you know, like I said, this eye surgeon and my parents were very, uh, you know, well-behaved, conservative European. My mother wouldn't even wear, you know, she wore lipstick maybe once a year, no makeup there. You know, we didn't swear at home, which is why I have fun with swearing too, because <laughs> it's such a silly thing. I, I really don't swear at home and Danny knows this. And I even tried to swear on stage as a comedian a number of times and it never worked because it wasn't me. It wasn't my essence, but that's why I make fun of swearing because people are also, mm, you know, and it's so silly. It's so ridiculous. As far as I'm concerned that, that we point fingers and like, why don't we just, as Esther says, look away and go do something else and send love. And of course, if people are abusive, you know, uh, that there's no room for that. Oh, is somebody, is somebody. Where? That's good. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say it quickly. I can't. I'm going to say it quickly. Franny. I'm not honest, longest... but I'm trying to find you. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Franny, this is the longest time you have ever spoken without ever having to take a mouth vomit. taken. <laughs> That's very astute of you. <laughs> it's so true. I know, I know. Or to dance on the sofa. Say again? Or to dance on the sofa. This is the longest time she talks yes, about dancing on yes, the sofa. Yes. I love how you swear and it's in such good humor. It's Jackie That's Ward. So funny. I've just seen you for the first time. Hi, so nice to meet you. Oh boy, this is such a treat. Uh, <laughs> oh, does that resonate with you? Yeah? Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, it's weird. It just, I honestly didn't plan that. Like there's, you know, some things I think about before and then I just let it rip. The gift of dancing nonstop though, it really gets you out of your head. And that's what I'm so <laughs> excited about is people are digging that, especially now. Cause boy, we can worry. We can worry up a storm. Oh, we can worry. We can worry. And what does that do? You know, what does it do? It does not. And I'm not saying we shouldn't, you know, get out there and, 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 you know, do whatever you need to do to, to whatever, research this and make your opinions and decisions and whatever, but worrying, not, not a, so, okay. So my memoir, what I was getting at was, so not only was I raised by these, uh, you know, my dad studied under Sigmund Freud and I went to, you know, I graduated high school at 50 and all these, but I was, you know, stuck. So when I was, I had written the play already and I'd gotten the attention of Arthur Hiller and all the, you know, it was somewhat successful as, as this uh, playwright and, 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 and a solo actress in Canada and getting a shitload. There you go. First uh, swear word of the word <laughs> of the year of the day of the, whatever. <laughs> I'm just, okay. I was still stuck and I was so tired of having uh, anxiety erode my joy in any capacity anymore and I st and I thought what what I, I wrote this play and the play's about my journey out and yet here I am still experiencing this what is going on and also I had a fair bit of philanthropy and grants and you know things were going well and then it dried up so I thought I got to do something and mm -hmm. I sure as heck didn't want to go back to having you know any kind of job that didn't bring me joy because the most it was it was such a treat for me to perform uh, a story a living story my play in front of audiences that were so excited about it um because uh, you know members of my family uh you know threatened to sue me 
for sharing the truth of our familial story because not because they were in any way um, bad people at all at all. But when you are brought up uh, being told uh, that if you reveal the truth of your heritage, it will get you killed. And then here, the, the youngest daughter, me, you know, writes a play and, 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 and wants to do this. They thought that I was uh, disrespecting uh, my father and that, I, that, that I was going to get our family killed. And, and, you know, they, they really were worried. Um, and my father also threatened me with lawsuits, but then I went ahead and did it. And so the great thing is the, the incredible joy of performing the truth of my story, um, to people who got it and were so appreciative was massively healing. And oh, hey, wait a minute now, um, Rochelle, you saw the Walton Steins. Is that is that right? Can you hear me if I speak, Franny? Am I muted, Rochelle? Or no, is that who's speaking? Yes, yes, we have this. We hear you. We hear you. Is that oh, right? okay? Thank you, Danny. Yeah, I'll speak at the end, Franny. But you just <laughs> said you touched people who got it. When you said earlier tonight that you were comfortable in the darkness, that was your attraction in Romeo and Juliet, I, uh, it was like lightning went off in my head wow. to have that comfortableness in darkness, the hiding you in the basket. It's, right. it, it hit me right to the core, right oh. to the core. And Mary, I won't talk now, I'll talk later, but Mary... That I, because it's not, I'm not the one tonight, but I'm, I'm taking a tiny segue to say, Mary, you found the beauty in your mother, yeah. you oh, creative and made the clothing. So I want Franny to go back to where she was talking, but uh, just know that you touched me also, Mary. But where I differed and where I'm getting so much out of tonight is it seems that Franny's message, Karen's message, is to live in the joy. And when Mary keeps saying, I thank you, Franny, for helping me process my mother, she doesn't use the word process, and you pull out the good, and you see her as tragic. Everybody on the Zoom tonight is able to go to the positive, the beauty, to grasp from Esther Hicks. Franny, I'll let you segue in a minute, the seamless segue. No, no, take your time. Take your time. I, I, it, it wasn't the moment I was going to choose to speak, but uh, you used the term, those that got it, that hit it to the core. The whole evening is hitting me, but I've been sitting silent because everybody, even Jonathan Mellers comes up with this cute uh, humor of the vomit. Now, <laughs> Franny knows that I've been bulimic 28 years, 29. And uh, so vomit was something different for me but Franny and I have a bond that if I never saw her again, if I never spoke to her, if I never had an image, if I was never on the internet, she touched me in a way, and she will tell you, because she has told me, that people all over the world, ex-Nazis, gay, people have written her to thank her that she was so brave to write the Walton Steins and to produce. And um, I think I'll shut up now, Franny. Oh. <laughs> you said something about people that got it and touched to the core. So I you love your sharing and I love you so much, Rochelle. You don't have to shut up. I, I, I want to just speak to Rochelle talked about the basket. See, I found out after I started doing these love streams that Rochelle, who I didn't know, had come to see a version of my play, The Waltonsteins, in Boca, right? Exactly. 
I, I don't know if I was living in Florida or still living in Canada or what, but I performed it here, you know, and, and, and the basket, one of the scenes was, uh, I was depicting myself as a little girl hiding in a laundry basket, which I did as a little girl, a lot to escape the crazy in my home. And, and no, what you said was powerful. I'm, but let's make sure Mary listens to it again, because she actually, uh, I think she may have gotten up to to deal with her doggy, Indy, again. Um, she didn't hear what you said, Rochelle, but I know she would absolutely love it. But Mary, um, I don't, I don't want to interrupt. I, I, no. Maybe we should wait for her to come back. But by the same token, maybe I'll take, I don't know. It, Karen, you tell me if I'm slightly out of order. I mean that, Karen, because <laughs> what I wanted to say before is uh, Mary found the beauty in her mother. Franny, you have always, every show I've ever seen, you have pointed out the gratitude that you have for your parents. You mm -hmm. have seen the fragility. You have, and yet you appreciate how much they've given you. Mm -hmm. Karen, I'm a total neophyte. <laughs> in Abraham because um and that's the journey uh, yeah. that to because from my father I can see goodness um and yet I, I have to say in truth and and that's why we want Mary back um from my mother it is something, and that's why I said, Karen, you shut me up when necessary, sweetheart, that it is so out of the realm of human that I used to think she was inhabited by an entity that this is, um, in other words, Mary saw the gifts from the mother, 22 years of, of ballet, costumes. So somewhere along the line, that woman, had visions for the daughter, had a creative mind. Um, Franny, you, we always talk about fear being the biggest disease. That's about the most I hear from you, sweetheart, as far as uh, torture from a parent. The love was always there. The fear of danger. You correct me if I'm wrong. From no one, I think John Williams, maybe? maybe could jump in, I don't know, but from no one do I hear of a parent who, and remember abandonment is pain, so that's why I say that John Williams, but from no one do I hear of a parent who wanted to murder, destroy, mutilate, cut up with objects, let alone to say verbal, because verbal's more, at inception meaning hated the minute they came out of the birth canal so franny and i have a connection where she kind of understands karen money williams i'm nowhere with regards to letting go to um so i want to let franny come back in a second as to the pain and i hear so many nuggets tonight of um that it's a process. I don't want this to be about me, so I didn't know I would talk. Um, and and yet, Franny, you, you put as to people that get it. I truly believe that almost everyone um, who watches you, Franny, gets you. They may not have known what you went through, but you put out a love that is so universal, crossing religion and whatever, and you do it with such brilliant humor as to elevate us in a time when we really need it, that it is beyond medicine. And I had made a promise to you that I was going to write a poem. The first one I came up with was the gift that keeps on giving. But I was going to ask you if you like the title. Karen Money Williams, I'm about to shut up. Um, <laughs> so... I, I'm trying to see where I want to end this, simply to say uh, the nuggets of tonight. I was going to ask you, Franny, maybe before Mary comes back or when she comes back, because she's a dancer. We all know that. Was, was she's, here. she's been listening to you. Oh, bravo, bravo. I didn't know that. 
because I didn't know if you wanted to touch on the stripper aspect of tonight at all. I saw yeah, that. Yes, I was just, I just close, you know, your, your intuition is genius because that was actually what I was getting at. Yeah, well, thank, you, thank you, go God. Rochelle. Rochelle, you, you are the gift. I don't have to hide under a rock then. I love you, Franny. Thank you. Because in between my self-mutilation in speech, thank you, sweetheart. Thank you. I was afraid. I thought it'd be so inappropriate. Okay. Uh, I think I can shut up, Karen. I hope. <laughs> you're hilarious. And Rochelle, there's nothing, you know, you're, you're lovely and you're so wise. And I mean, you know, because you're, you're what you were talking about is uh, the process of uh, right. And it's so different for everybody. And that's a perfect segue. Like part of my deal was with. I, OK, so being this very, you know, this girl who was so, you know, well educated. I went to the best boarding school in Canada. Blah, 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 blah. And yet I was really uh, screwed up. And uh, if you want to say that I was really out of alignment, I was tortured. I was not a happy camper. So all of those things don't equal, uh, you know, being a person who's aligned with the love that we are, which really cuts through everything. And so there I was uh, having had some, you know, a, a fair bit of success, the attention of a legendary Hollywood actor, a ton of uh, rather director, that being uh, Arthur Hiller, you know, all this kind of press, yada, yada, touring and making money and blah, 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 success as a solo show uh, performer. And then after the, you know, the philanthropy and the grants and everything went. So I wanted to keep making uh, my play because my play was the one thing that felt super healing to me. Therapy on wheels was so heartwarming was so why wasn't there? Why isn't the money flowing? And I started going anxiety. And of course, we all know anxiety attracts anxiety. <laughs> so my law of attraction was just, you know, I was a perfect match. And uh, the, I, the, the idea of going to work uh, at, at any kind of day job, and I've done so many of them, I couldn't breathe. I really couldn't breathe. The thought of it, and actually even some friends of mine wanted to hire me to be an assistant, and I tried to do it for two days, and I wanted to shoot myself. I mean, it was just, I couldn't uh, function. I wanted to perform. I was uh, getting some uh, television work here and there, but nothing that was really going to be substantial. So I could continue to pay you know there's you know a composer and and a director and and a technician and all this and to tour even though I got booked and all this there are costs so uh I I I had an idea <laughs> I thought you know I you have to understand I had never ever been to a strip club in my life and anyone who I'd heard about who went to strip clubs, I, I had huge judgment. And yeah, there's obviously some, you know, shall we say darkness associated with that, uh, that business. <laughs> so anyway, I thought, what if I create a persona and like, make money as a stripper but then I thought oh no no maybe it's too scary and it, I would be risking my life I thought again I'd be risking my life so I ran up by my director at the time Lena Golder Smith who um she said uh I said well look you know I I, I grew up on the right side of the tracks I just probably she said well Franny uh she happened to be indigenous half indigenous uh, uh Canadian Indian and half Jewish. And she said, I did not grow up on the right side of the tracks. And I know that you would be just fine. You'd make a, a boatload of cash. Uh, you know who you really are. She really loved me and loved the play and what I was doing and the whole identity reclamation she totally got. And she said, yeah, you could go and do it undercover and I know you'd be okay. So oh God, I'm getting goosebumps because for they was so scary. I went and I went to a strip club for the first time and auditioned to be a stripper as a, and here's the oxymoron. I had just come out of the closet as this Jewish person who had been raised only to be Catholic and not to tell anyone the truth of my identity or I'd get killed. And there I went to a strip club pretending to be British. 
<laughs> I created a whole persona. My my uh, handle, my stripper name was Smarty Panties. Now, do we have Jonathan Mellor still here? N no, I don't. N is he still oh, here? Hold on, I'm still here. Let me get on with a cam. <laughs> <laughs> Now, this, this accent was based more on my friend from London who was originally from Brighton. And I used to call her when, during my six weeks as a stripper and I'd run my accent by her and she would say it's perfect. And I actually got interrogated by one of the club owners at one point because he couldn't understand why a British stripper, he just didn't get my whole thing because I was very weird. I was the weirdest stripper they'd ever seen. As a matter of fact, what I, it was, I was basically mocking the audience and also it was i mean yes there was a, the sexual component was that i was terrified of being in my body i was terrified of the world and so i was this british stripper for six weeks named smarty panties and i had a wig and the whole thing and also the other reason i really wanted to do it is i was having a little fame as as i said in in canada mostly as a uh, playwright and as a solo performer with my show the walton steins and a lot of uh, entertainment folks, producers and the like, go to these clubs, actors and stuff. And I, you know, I heard this. And so I thought, oh, my gosh, if I, you know, I'm not going to get booked for some of these nice, you know, big theater gigs. If they find out that, uh, you know, the nice little uh, Jewish Catholic Franny is a, a strip of darling. So <laughs> I was the whole thing was really scary. But again, I was attracted like a like a mosquito to a, a bug light to confronting my fear not to throw myself into a shark pit, you know, they don't, they're, I don't think they're in pits, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I don't know, maybe, but that's a maybe in Florida, but you know, it's getting pretty dry at times, although it's raining a lot. So here's, so what I did is um, this is what I did. And I actually still can't believe I did it, but I, uh, my, I, I, I never stopped my accent. I was so scared of being in that environment that my accent was like a, a security blanket. So uh, I never conferred, conferred with the other strippers as me. However, at one point I had to take a bus and who should sit next to me is a person who had ended up, had heard my CBC radio uh, 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 documentary uh, about my play, The Walton Steins, and ended up talking to me about it. I can't remember. And um, and so the whole thing was so bizarre. And I thought, oh, I've made such a good decision to do this undercover because it's, it's you know, it's you never know. It's like six degrees of separation. So um, I, I also wanted to share that because what I had was an unbelievable moment and Rochelle it was like what you're talking about these moments right that are are, are so so profound I, I was on stage you know pretty much naked in the buff uh at the age by the way of 39 I did this 39 so I wasn't like 21 years old 39 and I think by the way that having this fake accent like if I had dropped the accent the rest of my body would have dropped too I just have a suspicion because <laughs> I was 39 already <laughs> 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 that's scary okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, but there, I, I think everything was held together uh, by this this accent, and and so uh, I had this amazing, unexpected healing, which happened. Uh, you know, first of all, I was using weirdest props, and and it was to and it was trying to evoke uh, humor. I, I don't think I wrote this in the memoir, but at one point, I threw cereal at the whole audience. I mean, I was doing nothing that anyone had ever seen. <laughs> they didn't know what it hit them. Um, um, but um, uh, I was standing in the buff one day after my, you know, you do these little shows, and I had this incredible realization that I felt safe. I felt totally safe, naked in front of a room, this huge club full of strangers. And it was wildly healing, wildly healing. And that is really what I believe I did this to get without knowing it, right? I just, it, because, our, and, and that's why I also wrote it in is because healing comes 
sometimes in the darkest of places. And I wanted to encourage people not to be judgmental about some of our journeys that perhaps are outside of the parameters of what we think is permissible or whatever. Because let me tell you, the whole thing was not what I, you know, I was never, um, I'm not in any way an advocate to be a stripper. I mean, I didn't do it because I'm promoting the sex industry at all. It really wasn't that. It's I was reclaiming my voice as a performer and also pushing the boundaries of what is for verboten. In my case, it just felt healthy and I'm so glad I did it. And so weaving those three points of view into my memoir made it feel like I uh, relevant to me. So that's what I did. Yeah. Wow. Beautiful. <laughs> I love the cereal part. <laughs> oh my goodness. Bravo. That's one of so many weird things water, I did. Water, water. She threw water on them and they loved them. <laughs> water? Water. You threw water in the shower. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you have this, like, where was I now? I one play, one club, you do like a shower. You know, I mean, I was never like sexy in the you know way, the traditional way that I, you know, that they all kind of do the same thing. And I was, you know, I was wearing at one point, I like I have a cow table here. I have a table that I made that's that has cow spots on it with an udder yeah. that is attached with Velcro. <laughs> you can take on a, it's totally surreal. I wore an udder on stage at one point. And I mean, do you, do you understand what I'm saying? It was just very, the whole thing was surreal and weird and probably the farthest thing from any what anyone's idea was sexy was I was like Carol Burnett as a stripper, I guess. So it was, you know, it was, it was very weird and oddly healing. And, um, you know, we all have our journeys and I just want us to be kinder to ourselves and to each other. Not again, I'm not in any way condoning the, 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 the bizarre sex industry because it's, that's a whole other story. And I'm not in any way saying that. Uh, I'm just saying that this was six weeks of my journey and for that specific reason. And, um, I think it's great. <laughs> so, brave Karen, laddie. It was what? She, you are a brave laddie. I'm a brave, brave laddie. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it was fun having the ability to be on the phone while I was doing this to speak to my British friend, who, by the way, toured, you know, when I was a uh, doing stand-up comedy across Canada with me. So she knew me really well as a performer and knew what I was up to. But um, does anybody else have any questions or anything? <laughs> I do. Uh, I, I was just, oh, go ahead, my dear. Yeah, go ahead, Mark. Um, it's, it's going back to, to some of my notes, but the word residual impact uh, is something I would like you to, to talk a little bit about what well, by residual impact i mean you know there's been some conversation about when we talk about things that are that don't feel good there's a impact mm -hmm. and yeah. i think i think we've kind of like discussed about anytime we talk about this it sounds like there's when you talk about things that don't feel good then there's a residual impact it it, it kind of has a, a thing that lasts a little longer Wow. And so I, I don't want to debate that too much, but I would like you to just talk about mm -hmm. the residual impact of fun. Oh. And, 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 and I think really this is what I want to get from you is because you are the, you're okay. I think we can all agree. I mean, who, let's vote for the funnest person, the fun, the person that can get the funnest for whatever period of time for the for a long period of time. <laughs> okay there's, there's, there's no there's no doubt about that okay so i want to throw out a couple little things and you can play with it any way you want to uh, when i see you perform it's um i call that channeling of some sort i think when you're acting you're, you're channeling and so you can play with that if you want if you want to play with that word channeling or in the zone you know whatever 
but when you're performing, you're having fun. Obviously, you're having fun. When we watch you having fun, we're having fun. Mm -hmm. And if we have fun for an hour watching you and we're laughing and feeling joy and we're feeling love during a period of time, sometimes we don't understand maybe that there is a residual impact of that too. Right. Right. We, we, think that, we think that we're looking for, and there's been some words talked about escape. Mm -hmm. I, I think having fun, a period of fun, is, an is, is more than escape, more than escape. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 a, it's a decision to have this moment right now feeling good. That's right. and, and, and it's more than an escape. It's not like you have fun for 15 minutes or two hours with, in Franny's case, and then you go <laughs> back to something, okay? <laughs> then back to whatever you're escaping. It's not like you have to work really hard to get into this place. And then when, you, then when, you're, when that period of time is over, that you go back to something that was some return to something that happened when you were a kid or something. So anyway, if you could, if you could play with that just a little bit for me. Sure. No, that's such a great, great sharing, Mark. Yeah, it's so true. It's the residual effects. And what you're speaking of is fun. And that's it. It's just, Wow, it, it's so true. It's just like anything, if we, the residual effects of worry, as we all know, right? It's just, what does that do but feed the monster? So the re residual effects of fun, which I, you know, I, I may be just a little bit addicted to in a good way and apologetically. And, you know, and, and, and it's that thing. And I wouldn't, you know, it's not really channeling. It's, we're all channeling whatever it is. We're channeling worry or we're channeling, you know, the thing. But, but um, that's why I love movement because movement and I, uh, you know, for, you know, uh, being a danceaholic. And that's the other thing is I studied ja jazz ballet for years and years. So to kind of use those skills, oh, I was doing was having a workout as as a uh, you know British stripper. Not to, I'm not apologizing. I'm just saying this is truly what I did, and so um, you know uh, the, the dance, getting out of our worry, getting out of intellectualizing, and um, you know anything that's just silly that goes in the residual effect of that for me has been massive healing. I'm telling you the overflow uh, in my life, just little things that have happened because our, our, the residual effect of, of fun uh, is um, it, there's an overflow on a physiological level that I didn't know existed, but um, you know, like I will tell you, uh, you, what is it about a month ago, Danny, I had the worst, stomach pains I've ever had in my life and I didn't know what it was and it, it, it nothing comes out of the blue as Esther says it comes out of the uh, unconscious but I was feeling really good and then all of a sudden this happened well fast forward I discovered it, it, one of the um, supplements I take was toxic for me and I stopped taking it and I have never, my digestive system, I am able to eat everything. And it's been years. I had acid reflux and things like that for years that I created as a result of, uh, you know, my anxiety, my particular brand of, of, of anxiety. And I have, I don't have it anymore. So sometimes uh, the, the uh, residual effect of fun is always, I believe, healing. But sometimes, and, and I, I breathe into my body a lot now when there's pain, thanks to Esther and, and other sages, because I just trust that the answers will come and that the healing is there. But sometimes there is a tension that uh, escalates in the body, even uh, even in the with the in the in the name of or not the name of even on the um, you know it, it, the, the momentum of fun. Sometimes there are these little kind of jagged things that happen and I guess it's just trusting that was part of the I believe it was part of the 
residual effect of the fun was so strong that maybe that thing was going to happen to me. But because the fun was so big, I had the 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 knowledge and the courage and the wisdom and the 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 confidence of the fun confidence to breathe into it. And and Danny knows this. Like for the first time, I'm eating everything, and I mean like that. I like spices. I mean I you know it's just it's wonderful because I love all that stuff. And I used to cook a lot, and it's just so it's so super healing uh the residual effects of of I, I don't want to say hyper focusing on but I guess if I do these lives for you said two hours sometimes but mostly it's just like an hour Th that 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 is you know really really focusing on fun but I'm I'm you know too is um because I'm moving most of the time I'm allowing in uh, whatever comes through, because before I do these, I have, I'd like to talk about this and this, and I make my little sticky notes, not a lot, just a few, <laughs> but not, you know, okay, 24, no, but I, maybe three or four, but I often don't, you know, don't even go there because something will come through and it's just, uh, the, 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 um, you know, if there's any God that I'm kind of beholden to while I'm doing the silly, the silly stuff, it's, it's the God of, of silliness and joy and that I don't need to um, behave in a certain way that's acceptable without being unkind to myself and others. And that's really, that's my religion, you know, is just being kind as much as possible and silly and, and hey, if, if, if other people don't like it, <laughs> mouth vomit. So I, think I would like, to, if I, if I, I'd like to throw out an, an, another uh, little twist to this, sure. not a twist, a little bit, a bit of an insight. That when you have fun, and okay, compared to have, if you're in joy, and you're in the opposite of joy, whatever, something that you're thinking that doesn't feel good. In only one of those two things is your inner being, your bigger self your connection to all that is God source, whatever is joining you is, is pulling you is a, and when you enjoy, you're allowing that connection and alignment with your inner being, which trust me. I mean, just trust Abraham. It's way more powerful than anything. So your moments of joy, your moments of love, your moments of appreciation way outweigh. I mean, so much more power, and yes. more residual effect on your whole life, your beingness, your vibration, everything that is. Because your inner being is joining you there. You yes. are powerful when you are in joy. So, but realizing that can really change, help you change your life in the direction you want to go. Knowing, yeah. and, and that idea that, oh, I thought a bad thought, oh no, whatever, and I, you know, whatever, and something, but just know that's not it anywhere. It can't even touch. It's a million times more powerful to be aligned during that period of alignment. Yeah. And milk that. Milk that. Know that that's where the power is. So, I love when Franny, you, said you, that. Give, you give us that. When, uh, when Franny, when, when we watch you, you know what, what's happening in ourselves, in our inner being, anybody that watches you, listens to you, even thinks about you when you're not even around, uh -huh. their inner being is saying, yeah, what she said. Yeah, yes, because that's what our inner beings are acting just like Franny. Do you understand that? <laughs> our inner beings are just uh, like okay. Franny. Do you believe that? And that's the bigger part of you. So just let that happen. <laughs> Isn't that cool? So thank you, Franny. <laughs> the funniest thing. <laughs> like all of our inner beings are we're all dancing together it's just you know like and oh it's so so darling what you said mark I, I, but but i have to say you know like so many people give us permission right you do and karen does and everyone if we don't have each other we're just you know completely diluted in the sanatorium like i often reference <laughs> but so many people have given me permission, you know, and then we have to give ourselves permission, no matter what people think, <laughs> you know what I mean? Not, and, and in a kind way, that's the thing. And it took me a while and it took me exactly the amount of time it should have. But it's so, so, so precious that you said, that. I'm going to take that with me always. I'm going to take I'm that gonna... with me always. What a lovely thing. 
Thank you, Fanny. And it's, it's absolute. Uh, I, everybody was shaking their head because, you know, it's, it's what our inner beings are saying. Yeah, but she said, I have to stop the recording now because it's, it, it's, it's been two hours. I, so, <laughs> and before I stop the recording, can everybody just unmute for a second and, and just, I mean, but don't go away just for a moment, just for the recording. Come sure. on and say something or hooray or whatever. Yes, thank hey. you, Franny. You're awesome. Hey, hey. love you, Franny. Endless joy, my okay. goodness. The, re the, the, the recording is stopped, but we're still on Facebook Live and it is being recorded and saved on Facebook forever and ever and ever. Anyway, so Ooh. go ahead, continue on. You're on. Okay, Mark. The best part of my life ever is is all of this and seeing my darling husband here and and just having the opportunity to do this. It is the richest thing I've ever had the opportunity ever to do. And it's just it's 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 I just want more and more and more. Like you say, the residual it just that's part of the residual thing, too, I think, is that it becomes an addiction in a good way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. can i interrupt for a second oh you're on uh, go for it yeah we've lost it on um uh, on zoom do you think franny is worthy of an abc love game an abc what? No. franny wait for this mark <laughs> karen and a few of us will know this and it is stolen from another teacher of a uh, law of attraction. ABC Love Game. We will go from love game. A, love game. A to Z, mm -hmm. and from every initial, a positive word we oh. see about you. <laughs> Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, are people too tired now? I'm extremely curious idea. Mark so you can will tell you, can... you I'm the master of this. So <laughs> I will start with Franny. You are amazing. And this is a this is a free for all. If you come up with an A word now, go say anything that a word that comes to mind about Franny will be going from A to B to C to every every letter in the alphabet. And sometimes there's one word, sometimes it's beautiful. There you go, there's a good B. Uh, how about the charismatic? Right. Oh. Dynamic. Delightful. E is for effortless. Yeah. Energy. Just energetic. F is for Frank. Frank? I say fantastic. And funny. Fun. Right. Fun, funny. Yeah, there you go. That's just for Frank. Frank. <laughs> <laughs> that that could be a that could be a, a, a adjective, right? A Franny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a there's a there's a description there, right? Oh, I've got one for G. G. Gleeful. Ooh. Ooh. Gracious. Oh, you're going to get me mushy. Uh, <laughs> <cute>. <laughs> I'm not, I, I don't know if phrases are legal, but good and plenty. I don't know why that came to me. Good and plenty. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. <laughs> Something to do with good and plenty. I don't know. I like that's it. a G. I'm, I'm trying to do a G. H. 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 Hilarious. Hilarious. <laughs> yep, that's it. Right there. Yep. Happy. From the way she comes across every time I have seen her on the Facebook love bomb, <laughs> invincible. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> yes, incredible. Okay. Nice. Joyful. Yes. Jewish. <laughs> Jocular. 
Popular, <laughs> Jewish, joyful. <laughs> joyful. Kind. Um. Kind. Cuckoo. <laughs> I like that one. Yeah, that's good. I love that. I love that. I love that. Cuckoo, cool. we gotta remember that one. That's cool. Loving. Yeah. Uh, loving. Loverball. Loverball. <laughs> Lovely. No. Yeah. Loving. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the best dream oh, yeah. ever. <laughs> What's that? Limitless. Oh. oh. Wow, that's a good one. Wow. That's great. That's a good one. M is for Mary. Mary? Yes. Mary. Mary. I'm married. It's your accent. No, no, no. M -E <laughs> Mary like Merry Christmas. Mary. M-E-R-R-Y. Mary. -R -R -Y. Oh, Mary. <laughs> Yes, yes. yes. Oh. Can I give another M? Say it. Magnificent. Oh. 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 Marvelous. Yes. Moving. Marvelous. You definitely are moving. You're moving yourself yes. and you're moving us. That's for right. sure. Oh. N is such a hard word. <laughs> you're nice. Nice. So I will say Karen's favorite word, nifty. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I will take that with me always. <laughs> nifty. Nifty. That's right. It is your favorite word. <laughs> Rochelle, you've disappeared. Um, no. No. Oh. Notorious. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Wow. Oh. Victorious. Rochelle, I love you because um, I do this ABC game for myself. I've got another new word. Uh, so what's the old oh, word? No. Outstanding. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. yeah. Uh, open to uh, open. Open. Yeah, that's what came to my mind. Thank you. Thank you. That's exactly the one I was saying. Oh, she saw about that open. This is unreal. It's like Christmas and Hanukkah and Easter <laughs> and my birthday all rolled into one. Oh. Thing. All right, P. I want P. <laughs> Pretty. Um, People you come out, Pretty. Although you come out eccentric, you are peaceful. Ah. ah, yes, very nice. Yes, that's true. Popular, Thank you. popular, popular. yes, popular. Yeah. 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 yes, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, oh, Q. Q is such a hard word. Uh, queen, queen, queen right. Queen. Queen. <laughs> uh. I was going to say quality. No, oh, oh. And there is only one word for R, radiant. Oh. oh. Yes, <laughs> and, and, and rich, and rich. Rich, rich, rich. Rich, rich, rich. 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 Mm. rich. Very rich. In so many ways. Very yeah. Right, 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 rich. In so many ways. All right, S, you get to say, da Danny, what's her what's her S word? S word. <laughs> if he doesn't get this, I will punch him. <laughs> oh, I know. All right, anybody. Wow. <laughs> silly, silly, serene. Uh -oh. Sexy. Sexy. Oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Took a while, but I found it, yeah. <laughs> Stupendous. Savvy. savvy. Yeah. Sassy. Savvy. 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 Danny didn't say it. <laughs> Sexy. No, he said it. Danny said it. Danny said it. Danny said it. In his early accent, not the. Uh, Danny. Danny. <laughs> Danny. You got the point. Danny's a gentleman. Danny's a gentleman. <laughs>
Thanks. P. P. Oh, I sophisticated. Sage. Sage. Where are we at? I thought we're a T. Oh, T. Terrific. Tremendous. Talented. 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 Talented to the max. <laughs> Talent. <laughs> Terrific. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. And truth. Truth. Truthful. Yeah. Mm hmm. Truthful. Yeah. What are we at? On you? There's got to be a few good ones there. You. You is unique. Yeah. Unique. 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 Yes. Unique. <laughs> I'm going to take B because of how lively she is. Virile. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you mean vivacious? <laughs> oh, yeah, that too. <laughs> uh, did you notice my nostril hair, Jonathan? <laughs> <laughs> it's better than virile. <laughs> <Feral. laughs> <laughs> 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 I take it. I take it. There are a few, there are a few for W. I leave it to everybody else. W. Oh. Wonderful. Wonderful. Oh, oh, yes. Oh. Hey, Danny. And wise, <laughs> wise, wise. Winsome. Oh. And whimsical. Yes, I was going to say that too. Whimsical. I love that one. Like that. Witty. <laughs> Witty. Witty. Yes. Oh. Mark, yeah. I'm waiting for the X where it throws oh. everyone. You got it. What's X? See okay. You. Okay. And before anybody, what's this meaning of genial? Hospitable to neighbors and foreigners. I could have cheated and gone on the X and said exemplary. <laughs> exemplary. Very nice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this I'm is gonna good. be shot by oh, Danny for saying this. I'm going to be shot for, by Danny for saying this. <laughs> oh. Yummy. Yummy. Yeah. <laughs> Yummy. Yummy. <laughs> I'm three years old. <laughs> Yummy. No. Horrible. Useful. Very yummy. Oh. <laughs> You'd only be shot if you were a cannibal. <laughs> Z. Z. Which Z? Oh, Z in Canada. And it's Z in 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 Grantham. That's how you say because that's how we say it in Canada. Z, Z, whichever you choose. <laughs> I have Zesty. one. Zany. Zany. Oh. Oh, you're in the, you're in the zone. I'm in the zone. Yeah. Oh. I'm in the zone. Yeah, right. yeah that's for sure. <laughs> and uh, one, one more, just for you, because uh, there's a person on Facebook Live named Lilla Z Rose. Yes. That said, thank you, Franny Sheridan, for being ever fascinating. So that was a E and uh, an F, I guess. <laughs> uh, ever fascinating. Nice. Not on tonight, though, is she? On Facebook Live, she made a comment, and I'm reading it. Oh, how nice! Oh, yeah. So she's she's watching, but she can only type. If she oh, yeah, wants. yeah. Oh, love to you, Leela. Love to you, Leela. I know I've known Leela for so long. Wow. Well, this is great. So now, were you thinking of doing the whole Hebrew alphabet next? <laughs> <laughs> no, why not? You have to teach us that first. Let's not quit now. I think English is enough for one night. <laughs> Tell you, I honestly, this is, I've never had this before. What a beautiful, what a, 
it is really surreal, isn't this? This is a surreal gift. It's like they I love it so much. Just, just thank you so much, Karen and and Mark and Danny and Lynn and Jonathan and Bracala and Rochelle and Laura and John Williams and Leela and whoever else is out there in my toaster. <laughs> This is just such Thank a beautiful, you. beautiful, beautiful, rich gift. Honestly, this is the, this is the opposite of a roast. Perfectly oh, I, I'm going to be honest with you. It usually ends up between me and Mark. <laughs> when we get a speaker that likes pushes our buttons in a good way. <laughs> They will get this. Oh, <laughs> right, right, very good. Well, and uh, if you want to know where the idea came from for this ABC game, go and check out uh, Karen Laurie uh, Chronic Pleasure. Can you say you go to where Karen Laurie? <laughs> Karen Laurie, oh, you know, she has right. to know her. The member of the, the group, yes. Is that who you're talking about? Yes. 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 Her whole chronic pleasure has this game in it. Yes, it is yes. one of uh, it is one of Karen Laurie's many process feel good processes. I love it. Yeah. Great. And I do it on a daily basis. You're so wise to do that. What a gift. What Very a gift. Nice. And you do it for yourself, Jonathan? Indeed, I do. Okay, goody. I'm glad to hear it. That's Very so good. Important. What I'm a great gift. Go it because I could go from A to Z in less than uh, a minute. Wow. Wow. So, Franny, do you want to uh, knock this off at 10 o'clock? Or you got some more thing? Or if you want to no, get off at 10 o'clock? I think yeah. I'm. This is perfect. This is a perfect, perfect, perfect. It's not a bookend, but it's a perfect, you know, the new Emal. It's a perfect wrap up. It's yeah, just been yeah. so beautiful. And do you want me to stick, uh, just in case other people watch it, do you want me to stick in the links or Karen, do you want to do it or how, what would be best? Yes. Uh, let's see. Uh, well, let's see. I guess the chat won't continue on with us um so uh but yes if we could uh, um so what we'll do then we'll have this this video on abraham fund pinned to the top um and then uh if you could put the links there as a comment as comments there just underneath it i Perfect. guess you got it yeah. easy peasy yes Great. yeah um, Wonderful. This, this is beyond, beyond, beyond. You know, I feel I, I no expectations, yeah. but anyway, I don't Good. think I'm going to stop smiling from ear to ass. That <laughs> <laughs> is one I'm... big smile. <laughs> Tell us, that's me. I love you all so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Love you too, Franny. Thank you for thank you so much for bringing yourself here. You are so dear to us. Right. Just you. a joy. Thank you. See you thank soon. You. Bye. 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 guys. And everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Good night, everybody. Good night. Love you all. Good night. Bye. Love you thank you guys. Thank you for coming to the party. I'm going to hit the EMD button. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody. Bye.